the weirdest altar call ever. My name is Larry Jones, and I welcome you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let me introduce you to Murph and Manny. Murph and Manny are my imaginary friends, a married couple, both inching toward 40. This clashing couple can be found on LarryJones.ca under a series of articles entitled Near and Far. Murph and Manny help demonstrate the difference between the Christian who is relationally near to Lord Jesus and the one relationally far from Lord Jesus. Both responded publicly to an evangelist invitation to receive Jesus. Both were aflame for Christ. And together, they lost that fervor for Christ, a, tra a tragedy typical of most who attend an evangelical church for a length of time. Both adopted their local church as their main source of support and fellowship and influence. They became team players, part of the church family, cooperative, submissive, supportive, and lukewarm. Everything was going well in the Murph and Manny marriage until that day Murph gave his head a shake and said, what am I doing? And made a decision to regain that passion for Jesus he so enjoyed at the time of his conversion. Of necessity, Murph, spiritually speaking, broke rank with fellow churchmen. He and them were now going different directions. I'm going back to our first love says Murph to Manny, confident that Manny would not only understand, but join him. But Manny was not sympathetic, not one little bit, like really. She had long ago replaced Christ as Lord and Shepherd and Teacher, and she was convinced, as were her evangelical friends, that loyalty to her church was loyalty to God. And so Murph and Manny became quite combative as they chased their contrasting dreams. During one particular Sunday morning service, we find our clashing couple sitting together in the balcony of their church, Bread of Life Community Center. Manny is content and attentive, while Murph is discontent and bored. And Murph's discontentment bubbles into silent grumbling. Why do we have to have the same guy preaching Sunday after Sunday after Sunday? How can a man preach for almost an hour and seldom mention Christ? Is this what the New Testament church looked like? One guy doing all the talking and everyone else pretending to listen? Why don't we experience the power of God instead of just reading about it in the Bible? Shut up, Murph, Murph says to Murph. Often, Murph daydreams while the pastor preaches. Quite an imagination, that boy. He sees the congregation, after praise time, reach for a muzzle from the row of black muzzles hanging neatly within reach on the back of every pew. Murph watches the congregation put the muzzle over their mouths. They sure look silly, Murph chuckles to himself, and he knows if he had a mirror, he would see himself equally silly. Manny can't figure out why her man has that annoying little grin. And why does he look at me like that, like there's something wrong with my face? So they are all muzzled, all except one, the pastor. Nobody muzzles the pastor, not even his wife. He thoroughly enjoys the center of attention, gets to crack funny jokes, tells the church family what an exciting week he has had, and expounds his spiritual insights. He pampers, jokes, corrects, and scolds. He seems like he's, he seems like he's having fun. Murph, in his imagination, is the only one who sees the denominational VIPs seated in a row across the stage behind the pastor, each suited and tied and somber. These guys follow the pastor around wherever he goes, be it preaching, counseling, playing tennis, relaxing in his recliner, soaking in unbelief from the boob tube, whatever. They are his Lord. To them does he bow. In them 
he abides. In verse imagination, everyone in the church is a midget, including the VIPs behind the pastor. The midgets, though midgets, are not all the same height, but their stature is determined by their spirituality. One might think that the pastor and the denominational biggies would be taller than the rest, but no, surprisingly, they are shorter. This because their allegiance to the religious system is more zealous than most. Everyone, including those on the platform, have a ball and chain fastened to their ankle, representative of their spiritual bondage. A sideways glance tells Murph that Manny also is tethered to a ball and chain, and Manny's sideway glance tells her that Murph's silly grin is getting sillier. Murph notices the pastor getting annoyed whenever a midget in the pews carelessly crosses his legs and inadvertently rattles his chain. Clink, clink, clink. And then Murph notices his ball and chain stretched out on the platform next to the pulpit. M-E-R-F, stamped in large letters on the ball, ankle lock, wide open, as if pining for the return of its once captive. Manny notices Murph's silly grin suddenly gone, replaced by a look of terror. The pastor picks up the ball and chain with outstretched hands while looking longingly at Murph. All the muzzled midgets filling the pews noisily stand to their feet, clink, 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 and gaze at Murph up in the balcony with equal yearning, all silently chorusing their plea, won't you come, won't you join us, Murph? Won't you come back? We really miss you, Murph. To Murph's horror, he feels himself drawn to the ball and chain he recently escaped, extended toward him in the pastor's hands. All those muzzled and distraught faces, the pleading eyes, the outstretched arms of, of welcome, even from the dignitaries, magnify the drawing power humans have upon humans. And then everyone rattled their chain in unison, filling the church with <clears throat> clink, clink, <clears throat> clink, clink. Mesmerized Murph slowly rises from his seat, makes his way to the aisle and down the balcony stairs and heads repentantly toward the altar. Manny's pointed, pointy elbow into Murph's ribs saved Murph from the M-E-R-F ball and chain waking him from his terror. What's with you, Murph? Now muzzle this man, he demands. You got beads of sweat running down your forehead. Song sung, ties taking, announcements announced, preaching preached, the people, muzzleless and shackless and tall, once again, are rejuvenated for at least a couple of hours. And the released chatterers chatter enthusiastically in the large foyer, about nothing spiritually relevant. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I say in love, remove that muzzle. Have you been bullied into silence? Has your religion with its repressive hierarchy and non-biblical traditions stifled you? Have you been overly impressed by practiced pulpit people? Brothers and sisters in Christ, I say in love, remove that muzzle. Has your spirit been crushed? Has your life been a reflection of the expectations of others? Have you failed to properly represent the Lord Jesus out of fear of controllers? Brothers and sisters in Christ, I say in love, only you can remove that muzzle. Have you been made afraid to declare the truth of God? Are you under the Lordship of Christ who says, preach, preach, preach? Or, under, or are you under the Lordship of man who says, don't you dare? Brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters in Christ, I say in love, remove that muzzle. <laughs>